I'm running over my flowers. How are we doing today? Pretty good, I hope. Let's just check out my setup here. Oops. How are we doing today? Good, I'm gonna turn this down. Welcome, welcome. Well, today we are going to, first I'm gonna plug in my camera so we have plenty of power. I always forget to do that. There, oops. Sorry about that. All right. Flowers. All right. Check out my messy, messy desk. So say hi if you're watching. We are going to work on the floral, make the bow for uh, the little sleds that we've been working on. Or I've been working on. Hopefully you've been making them too. I know some of you are. So that is awesome. All right. I just got to get used to these comment things. Hi, Gina. Hope Carrie is watching. Oh, goodness. Let's set this up here so we can turn it. And now I'll set this up so I can see if you guys have questions or comments. Thanks, Heather. Heather says she loves my stuff. Well, let's set this over here. We're going to work on this sled. I don't think I've showed you this one yet. I'll show you the two I've got completed with the bows and uh, florals on them and whatnot. Little tags. So this is There's No Place I Come. Uh, my previous live I did last week, I showed you how to build these sleds using Chocotour's uh, door tag surface. These are $9.99 on, on my website and the website is chocotour.com slash Odessa Rose. My name is Robin Schmidt but my company is Odessa Rose which is named after my grandma's. I haven't told that story in a while. Um, my grandmothers were um, Carrie Odessa was her middle name and Mary Rosella. And she went by Rosella but I took the middle names and, and came up with Odessa Rose. So that's how you get that. A lot of times I'm referred to as my as that is my name, but it's not. So, hello, Nancy. So you can buy these uh, tags on my website. And I think I, if you see the link, I tried to link it on there and hopefully it worked. Um, but, and then you take painter, uh, paint stir sticks and stain them and glue them on. In my last live, I showed how to do that. So if you haven't seen that, uh, go to my Dessa Rose Creates page and check out my videos and you'll see the live for that. So this is the one, uh, the first one I actually chalked to. I think I did this chalking on the live, on this sled here. And then, so then I made this floor arrangement. Um, and I'm going to show you how I made it and just attached it to it. So there's that one I've got done. And this one, there's Snow Place Like Home. This is a transfer from last year. And the other one, Home for the Holidays, is a current transfer. I don't think this is available. I haven't looked. And this I did more uh, pastels in it. Just a little bit of the marvelous uh, colored on the scarf and gold carrots. So I brought the pinks and the golds into my arrangement. And just made this little tag, best family ever. And so a lot of my uh, greeneries um, that I'm using this year either came from my store when I had my store or uh, I still buy wholesale because I um, do some wholesale retail at the shop where I sell my designs. So I still have access to um, wholesale companies. So I bought some new um, greenery this year with that. Um, also, last year after Christmas, I went to Kirkland's and got some like at 75% off or something. So I picked up some 
some things there last year. Being a wholesaler, retailer, you're you're used to not paying retail for stuff like that. But that's where I got these plaid leaves. Um, was from Kirkland's after Christmas sale. That's where I got those from. And they had the little jingle bells on them. So, so I'm always on the lookout for cool greenery and floral. Um, but anyway, this is one of the new ones I got. Um, this wholesale company is Raz, R-A-Z, that I buy from for the store. Um, but I love the wooden holly leaves on this. And it's got a big, like, magnolia leaves and uh, a little bit of pine. It's all a little frosted. This cone here might be too big for this. It wouldn't be too big if I wasn't going to put a bow on it. But I think with a bow, it might be might be a little much. We'll see. And it, it's got just a variety of things. Um, and I may just use this, but I may tuck in a little bit more pine with that. So, but I'm, I'm really loving this. This natural wood color is right here in this layer of polka dots I have underneath. So I kind of wanted to bring that, um, that cup natural wood color out. So that's why I'm picking up. You can see the polka dots. Yeah. Thanks, Robin. Love that. What an honor for your grandmas. Yes. Okay. So, let's, first I'm going to show you how I attach my rope. I guess I didn't really show you that, but I have this, you can use any twine. I just happen to have this, uh, I don't know what you call it, yarn jute stuff. I was going to do some macrame and I never got around to it, so I had this big big thing of uh, right there and I like the gray with my grayish brown runners so I'm just going to go that route. I've picked out some ribbons to use so we'll be using those. And so let's get started with this. This frays out really neat but actually once you get the floral on you don't really even see the fraying because I frayed the first one and you don't really see it, so um, I'm just going to tie it on. And I like to try to make sure that the knot or the, the tail ends up going down and not sticking up. So you got to try to like figure that out how you want that to go. I just tied a knot on it and then bring some out so you have enough to and really it's probably just for looks you could hang your sleigh with your rope if you wanted to or if you're going to hang it on the wall you could just put a nail and hang it with the under crossbar here or I think they're cute just leaning up against the hearth or uh, maybe if you had a big mantle or a shelf or something but you could hang them. I do think hanging puts a lot of weight because they do get heavy once you get your floral on them. Um, and you don't want them, God forbid, I hope they don't fall apart, but since they are just glued, there's no staples in them. And, uh, you know, I don't want it, them to um, fall apart by the, because, like I said, by the time you hang it and you get the weight of the flower on there, they get kind of heavy. And I just, I would just be worried that the weight may eventually pull apart the glue, but hopefully it wouldn't. I mean, I use E6000 in hot glue. I use hot glue to set set the position, and then the E6000 is really the bonding, the, the better bonding glue. But um, so, but anyway, you could hang it like this, or put a nail and hang them from behind. But I think they're best just. Um, leaning. I think they look cute because the sleds usually are leaning up against, you know, something, a house or, or a tree outside. So, so I also uh, just put a little hot glue underneath this knot. 
just to make it even more secure. Probably don't need to, but I did. Say hi to everybody. Absolutely love your ideas. You have such talent. Well, I don't know about that, but I have a lot of time on my hands, so I think I think a lot. Hi, good morning, Vicky. Did you show how to make your sled? Yes, I did on my previous live. So if you go to Odessa Rose Creates by Robin Schmidt um, and just uh, scroll down till you see it, it was just last week. I don't know what day I did it. Oh, I did it on Sunday. That's right. So I just did it on Sunday. Um, you can also click on, if you go to my page, click on, you'll see the buttons going across. If you scroll and you find videos, you can see all my lives and videos there too. On, on a lot of my uh, stuff that I do. Let's see, what else? Okay. Looks awesome. Good morning, good morning. All right. So we can get this out of the way. Alright, this is where I kind of like, you don't really know how it's going to turn out until it turns out. <laughs> that makes sense. So let's see. Um, so I definitely want to put these on there. And, you know, you got all these parts can come apart. And this is nice because it's hand wrapped with tape so that means all these pieces are going to be easy to separate. Sometimes you have to take uh, a cutter and cut things apart. Sometimes you can take things like this and just turn them in different directions so you can get them to swag out I guess you could say. So let's see. I'm just going to try to bend stuff and um, you know, make it not look so straight because in nature things don't really grow straight. They, you know, they have twists and turns in them. So make them a little bit more realistic. Let's see what we got here. Like these berries, I might, they're all on one stem, but you could cut them and put a chunk of them over on this side if you wanted to. Like you could just cut off a little snip and do it that way. And um, I'm just trying to say, I just think this guy is just a little bit too, too big for my project. So I'm going to pull him off. I might end up just cutting him off. I need, I need to really bring my wire cutters, but this has a cutter on it too, so, oops, get that guy out of there. Save him for another project. He's a pretty cone, but he's just a little big for what, for what I want to do today. Okay, and then all this is just, it's going to stick out, so... That's another thing. I, if I had a big cutter, I'd cut it off. I don't think this little guy is going to do it. Sometimes if you just, there it goes, rock it back and forth. Okay. So, let's see where we're at here. And what I probably will do is add, oh, here's some little berries. Add another little thing of greenery on this side. And I don't think it necessarily has to be symmetrical, like exactly the same on both sides. But maybe you want the weight of it even on both sides. Unless you're going to do something really funky like go this way or something you know depending on what your thing is down here what your design is down here if 
you had something that was just kind of more to one side, you could do something like that. But everything is down here, so I'm going to have to go across like this. And then I do think I'm going to end up putting maybe some of these berries in the center of my bow when I'm done. So I'm going to trim this guy down a little bit. I think I can just do that with my scissors. And we'll use that. We'll either tuck it in somewhere. Or. Okay, let's grab some more pine. And don't always think you have to use pine on everything. Like these are great. I got these at Kirkland's last year after Christmas. And they have frost on them and some berries. They're not screaming um, Christmas, you know, because they're not like an evergreen, but they really are pretty with the frost on them. Those I have, uh, some of those in here. And you see this was a big stem and I just cut off a branch of it and put it in here. So not everything has to be pine. Not everything has to be fine. Let me see. Here's some pretty evergreen. I might use a twig of this. So just play around, especially if you have a variety of florals you can mess with. So I'm going to separate this because I'm going to put just a hint of it on the other side. So we'll add this one to it, and then we'll put this other little piece on this side. And bring this leaf over here. So I got a big leaf up here, so that brings it kind of more even. And then we'll stick this one in here. So I'm just kind of getting a layout of how I want everything to look. Now this branch also I might cut. A piece of it off and bring it over here. I'm just trying to decide where I want to cut it. And we'll bring that in over here. So we're just trying to get it evened out. I'm going to bring that leaf down. So I'll probably end up putting my tag, because I'm going to make a little chalk tag. And I'll probably put that on this side, since I have these two leaves over here and just one on the over here. So I'll probably put it on this side. Okay, so I'm just kind of getting the layout in my mind how I want it to look. And now we need to assemble it. So... Now, if I had floral tape handy, which I don't think I do, I would maybe just tape it in. I don't know where my floral tape went to. But I can just hold that in. And these I may have to glue in. This one I think I can get in. Like that. And this one I'll probably have to glue in, okay? So I got these held all together. And since I don't have any floral tape, you can use wire. But this here is wired. This is what I use for the um, vine on my sweater pumpkins. It's fun to use, but I'm going to just chunk off a piece of it and use it as my wire to wire these together. I think I, I either got this at my, my, I think Michael's at Hobby Lobby. But I'm just gonna twist it around and just hold it in. So I got my 
little swag made. And like I said, I'll probably glue this one in because it doesn't have much of a stem. So I think I can just glue that in. So I'm take my hot glue and just kind of load it up on the tip there and find a good place for it to land and hopefully stick. Okay, so I'm gonna let that set for just a minute and we'll make the bow. And for that, I'm going to take a piece of twine and I'm going to grab my ribbons. So I got four here, maybe five. Got our little berries. We can either glue in here. I might end up gluing them or putting them on the top. Just depends. So. I make bows different ways, but for this one I want some loops in it. So um, just take some of your ribbon and make a loop. And if it's one sided, one direction, then you want to twist and get it right side up on your tail. But this one isn't, but you, so you can just pinch it. But you want to twist it and turn it so your tops are on, you know, front facing. And then you can just cut that off. And then you're going to make another one. Ooh, I've just got enough. I just got enough of it. Let's see if I can get rid of this tape so I don't lose this inch. <laughs> Save every inch of ribbon you can. All right, so we're gonna make another tail or loop with tails. And you want your loops to be the same size. So check that out. And if, like I said, if you needed to turn it, go ahead and turn that one. So you gotta pinch together and I'm gonna face it the opposite direction. And I'm gonna hold those together. Okay, so now you have this coming out. This is kind of the base. And I just use my widest ribbon um, first. So this, these two are about the same width, but I'm going to make this my base. And then we're going to go with this one now. And same thing, we're going to make loops again. About the same size of loop as the first set. And I'm going to cut this off. And here's where I'm talking about this one has the pattern only on one side. So if you twist this underneath so that the pattern comes up, and then lay that in there. So now you have the top pattern on both sides, not this side showing. Okay, so you're going to hold that again in your hand. I'm left-handed, so maybe you would be holding this in your right hand. I don't know. I'm kind of ambidextrous, so I think I'm doing this left-handed right now. But Okay, we're going to do another one. Same thing. I'm going to cut this off. We're going to twist. I usually twist the bottom one, but twist it. And pinch and lay that in this direction. So we got them in here. And eventually you're going to be like spreading all these around. And Okay, so we got it going on like that. Now my ne next ribbons are smaller. And I'm probably going to uh, tie this together now. And then I will add those on top. So this is when I take my twine and I'm just going to lay it across the top Hold it all together, bring it around to the back and just tie it in a knot. So I gave it one Tie. I'm going to turn it back around and make sure everything is laying how you want it before you actually knot it. But 
just make sure you know these are right side up and all that good stuff okay so I got it now I'm going to tie it in the knot now this twine is what I'm going to use to attach all of this to the sled so you want to you want a fairly large piece you know you want this long of a piece on it so we got this going on okay now I'm going to take a really soft ribbon like this lace one something that can tie in a knot really well. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to take a pretty big piece of it. And I'm going to lay this underneath the bow. Okay, so it's coming up to the top. Because that's what we're going to use to tie on these ribbons. Now at this point, you could do loops again just like we did with this one. Or you could just do pieces and lay them across, kind of like the messy bow. So I'm kind of combining, you can kind of combine bow techniques. So you can just lay a couple strips or you can do loops. It doesn't really matter. I might with the zigzag, I might lay that just in strips. So I'll do loops on this one. And it's a pattern on the top, so I gotta twist the bottom. And we'll do it again. And I'm gonna have to twist that one. And I'll switch it to the opposite side. So I have a loop on both ends. On both sides, I guess. Okay. And then I think while I'm holding it, I'm just going to grab some of this green zigzag. And then this I'm just going to do in strips. So I need about two strips. And I'm just going to lay them over my bow. I'm going to do another strip. Make an X. So I got it all there. I'm going to lay it on top. I'm going to take this soft lacy crochet ribbon here and I just want to make sure I got it going across the top of, of this bow. And I'm just going to tie it on the top this time. So now it's all laying there. And I got one of these that I need to turn that didn't get turned. For, so the pattern's on the top. So now's the time to do it. Let's make sure everything is in like even and in the right right place. Okay. Still got this guy wanting to go upside down on me. I'm turning it so the print side is up. Okay. Back to my crochet ribbon here and cinch it up. And now I'm just going to tie this in a little bow, just like tying your shoe. And then you tie that down tight. And you just got a little bow on the top. Pull the little loops short. You want little, little stubby loops on it. <laughs> okay, so all this action going on. So now you're going to be fluffing and trimming and um, trying to say if I like that bow in there. I think I'm just going to knot it. Because I'm going to put some berries or jingle bells or something right in this area. So okay. So now let's trim up our tails, dovetail the 
bigger ribbon, which you just fold in half, and from the on the fold side, you just go up to the ends, and that gives you your dovetail. I think most of you know how to do that. So you have a dovetail. You can just dovetail, you can lay straight, you can slant them, whatever you want to do. Any questions? shorter or the skinnier ribbon I'm just going to angle I need better scissors all right I'm continuing on the other side there it went away okay So we got kind of a, a messy bow, which is fine. We got the rickrack going. Look at that pop of green. This little bow here is just a little bit long, this little loop. So I'm going to pull it through and shorten it. There we go. Okay. And then it's nice to work with, you know, wired ribbon because you can puff out the loops. So we have it here. We've got these longer strings of ribbon hanging down. You got your jute here. This is what we're going to tie it all on. I'm going to use this jute to tie it to our floral. And then that ties it to the sled. So let's get this out of the way. So we're going to lay this on here. And the jute strings are going to go around the arrangement to the back. I'm just going to knot that. Okay. And this is what's cool about this hole being here on our door tags. I'm going to put one of the strings through the hole and the other one's going to go around the top here. Flip it over. I'm just going to do it so you can see it. So I got one string through the hole and the other string is going to come around to the top. And it just, I might have to sneak it through here. There, I got it around the top of the door tag and through the hole. So now I pull it tight and then I'm going to tie this in a knot. Tight. good enough. All right, so that attached it to there. Turn it so you can see it. Okay, so now is when you can mess around. I mean, this is hanging down in our words, so I probably will trim that up. So you're going to fiddle with it until you get how you like it. All right. Okay. And I talked about gluing something in, I thought. So now is where you can decide uh, 
If you want to add anything else to it, we talked about adding some berries. I might just stick them on this side, like right in there. Kind of brings them diagonally across. So I'm just going to add some glue to them. some glue and stick them right in here. Press it down a little bit so they stay. Okay. Um, oh, this is another thing I had in my store. This is a little jingle bell garland wire so I might cluster some up and just stick them on there or tie them on there maybe. So I'm gonna take a string of this and let's see um, how I want to attach this. I might should have done this before I tied it on but I think I can get it in there. to bring them up. Twist it. I think I'm just going to make a cluster of them right here. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle till you get it how you want it. Okay, so now we gotta make our tag. And I'll probably like bring that pine cone in. And you get to how you want it. I like to actually put some glue under this too so it's not shifting around too much. So uh, just pile in some glue underneath. like to have everything nice and secure. Now I need to make a tag. I'm going to attach a tag. This leaf is kind of obnoxious. So. Okay, so here we are so far. Looking pretty good, but I am going to make a little tag and probably Stick it in there. You gotta decide which side you're gonna put it on so you get your words, you know, not upside down. So is it gonna go here? Your words would go this way. It's gonna go on this side, your words go that way. So you gotta decide uh, which side you're gonna put it on. So I initially thought I would put it on this side, but this side seems heavier. Than this side so I might end up putting it on this side. Maybe I'll stick it like right in there. Something like that. And maybe if I move this leaf up to the top I would have a place for it. I don't want to cover up my pretty little holly leaves but maybe something in here. Okay? So I need to have my words going this way. So let's set this down. And I picked, um, since it says cold, hung, cold hands, warm heart, I'm gonna do together. And I'm gonna put a little piece of pine and a heart on first and then the word together on top of all that. So these little pieces of pine came from uh, Oh What Fun, 
which was a um, club couture transfer last year. But you can find little pieces of pine in several of our transfers. And I'm going to do this heart from the uh, Homespun Hearts. And I know um, I got it from my mama. It has some cute hearts in it too. So I think I'm just going to put like a little piece of pine here, a piece of pine there. I'm going to put a heart over it and then I'm going to do the words uh, together on top of all of that. So I just need a green. Um, I'll just use pesto and a red. I'll use scarlet. Get this flipped out here in no time. I've got a lot of glitter on my desk. Just take a multi tool, dip it in my green. You don't have to put a tag on it, but they're kind of fun just to add a, a little extra. You know, I try to, you know, all my designs I try to make like something you can't buy it at a store. Um, so you want them to be unique. So I'm going to pull these off. So we've got two little swags of pine. I'm going to dry that. overlay a little heart on it and then our wording we'll probably do in um, maybe Dune I am gonna fuzz this heart out some it's not very sticky but just over the pine that's pretty dry that and then we'll do together running across it all I think we'll be cute Dune here. Um, I might run just a little bit of uh, wax over this now that I got two layers. Mm, there's a chance it could stick to the transfer and pick up, so I'm gonna try to eliminate that if I can find my. This is just furniture wax paste. I'm just going to take a hint of it and just go over the top. This is to keep the transfer from sticking to that uh, chalk paste that I just put on. And if it's stuck to it, then it might pick it up. So I'm just going to rub this on there. Okay, so we got it ready for the next 
transfer of paste. I'm going to do together. This is from Forever Trio. I am going to fuzz this. I'm not sure if I've used this before. It's not really sticky. You can tell because it's not really sticking to the towel. So I think we're safe. It's got glitter on my desk from that floral. So we're going to lay this across here. It's a pretty big word for this little tag, but I think we can get it all on there. Take some of our dune. much left in this jar, but I have enough for this, that's for sure. Smooth it all out, because we want our print to be nice and smooth, with no squeegee lines, and then pick that up. Super cute, love it. Love it, love it. Dry. warmed up that wax again so I need to let me see it's shiny cool it down okay let's put this away and then we're going to attach the tag to our sled and we will be done even wax over this a little bit too. Now the top waxing is to make the whole surface hard and protect it from getting scraped off or anything like that. So again you could just go over it and put a little wax on your top layer. Well all the layers but and when that wax hardens just like on furniture or your floor wax it will get hard and act as a protective coating. Okay. Which I had already done to the sled. So, okay, so there's our little tag. Turned out really cute. That tag turned out so nicely. Thank you. I need to remember to wax. Yeah. It never hurts to wax. Like, in my mind. All right. So we got this guy going, and now we want to bring this in here and attach it and see how cute that's going to look. Heart, heart, get it? <laughs> so I'm going to add another piece of string on here so I can pull it in to where I want it. Just cut you a string. I'm just going to just kind of loop it on here. You can knot it if you want, but you don't have to. But I will just to keep it in place. Okay. And this is just so I can pull it in to where I want it and then glue it in on the back side and turn it around. So I'm going to try to like tuck it down in. And I want it to be able to, see, you know, to be able to read it. So I'm going to bring it out. And then I'm going to glue it in here. And then I will probably, I will try to find something to glue it in, like a twig or something. So it kind of stays in, in place. 
so um, I'm just gonna tuck it in. If I can tie it to something, I'll tie it. Kind of just depends. Like I can loop it through the original twine that I tied the whole bow floor arrangement onto. I can actually tie it to that. So I am going to do that. And if you can't find a place to tie it, then just glue it to something. But I think I can get it all all security, extra security does not hurt anything, right? So I'm going to tie that. And then I am going to just put a little bit of glue on it too. Now on the front side, you know, I want to be able to read it. So I might glue it to this wooden uh, holly leaf right here, right at this point. I'm just going to glue this corner of the tag to the tip of this leaf and that way it'll stay in position. So add a little bit of glue to the back. It's just a matter of fluffing and pulling ribbons where you want them to be, setting that pine cone down in there. I think you can see it pretty good. What do you think? Looks pretty good. This guy's kind of obnoxious. I might trim, trim this piece here down. it in somewhere else. Either there or there. Maybe I'll separate it and put a little piece on both areas. You can get all finicky. <laughs> I do. I get I start to get kind of picky where I want stuff. But that's what makes it look good. Some glue on this one. Stick it in over here. Pull off your glue strings and it's pretty good. It's kind of like these zigzaggies hanging there. I'll pop a green in the middle. Looks pretty good. And just keep rearranging to how you want it to look. You get the idea. Make sure you can see it. Don't start to hold things up too high. Okay, so there it is. Looks pretty cute. Let's see, you just keep fiddling it until you get to how you want it. So there. Hopefully you can see it okay. I'll hold it up closer. Alright. Awesome. Any more questions? Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Joan. Love, love, love it. This is one of my favorite transfers. I did all, I did six sleds and they're all different. Well, actually I've done four. Three of them now have the floral on them. And so I need to do floral, my other one. And then the other two sleds I just built yesterday and then I'm gonna chalk on them today and get their florals on and they're all going to be different so yeah so we have this one cold hands warm heart together I love how this little tag turned out and we have this one better not pout homes home for the holidays and a non 
non-traditional color, good for all winter, best family ever. There's no place like home with the snowman. And he's got that little pattern underneath him, the little um, Norwegian snowflake pattern. And done in our mauve and our gold. So he turned out really cute too. My other one I'm gonna do is the one, one star, one night, one child. One child, I can't remember how the order is. Um, and I'm gonna do the skating one and then all is calm, all is bright, I think will be on the fourth or the sixth one. So today I will get busy and get those done. And then tomorrow I'm gonna work on uh, porch boards, the Be Merry porch boards. I did um, four of those last year and they sold, so well, three, yeah, they sold, so I'm gonna do, I have boards to make three, three porch boards, so that's my project for the rest of the week. So thanks for joining me, thanks for chalking, thanks Tonda. Post pictures when you're fit. I will. I pretty much post pictures of everything I make. But thank you, Donna. Thank you, Debbie. Denise, thank you. And I will chalk with you later. Bye.